In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Unity's scriptable objects to store variables that can easily be accessed from any point in the game. Doing it this way keeps things nicely independent and prevents a lot of headaches when making changes to your system. The first question is of course when to use this method instead of just making public or static variables. For me the answer is pretty simple. Whenever I have a variable that only exists once in the game and is accessed by more than one script. In this game, like in almost every other strategy game, there are resources like wood, corn, water, stones, gold and so on. In the entire game, there is only one variable representing each resource and of course more than one script wants to know about it. For example, when the player wants to place a building, the game should check if there is enough wood and when a worker produces wood, it is added to the global variable. Also the UI, like in this game, wants to know about the current value. And of course, the worker who just produced wood shouldn't be responsible for telling the UI the wood can't change. In the best case, the worker doesn't even know there is a UI. Let's get started by making a new script and call it float SO. SO stands for scriptable object. In the class, we replace mono behavior with scriptable object. The core of this is of course a float value. Unlike classes, we can just create multiple instances of the script at one time. Instead, we create instances in our assets. For that, we need to add the create asset menu attribute. After saving, we can go in our assets, right click and create an instance. I'm going to call this one wood. I'm going to make another one called corn. When I right click to see them in the folder, you can see the instances I need files in our assets. Instead of just making it a public field that can be changed from anywhere, I make the field private and turn it into a public property that is read only and create some methods to change it from outside. That way we can add extra functionality like clamping the value and send out events when the value is changed. The first function is called change amount by, the other is called set new amount. The change amount by method changes the value by the given amount and makes sure that it doesn't go below zero as it wouldn't make sense in this game. You could of course make fields for a custom minimum and maximum amount. And the set new amount function sets the value to a new amount. Let's try this out with a test function. Back in our cultist class we will make a reference to float scriptable object called wood and change the value when pressing A or R. The cool thing is, we could either just drag and drop our wood scriptable object in the instance in the scene, but also in the prefab. Both the instance of the scriptable object, the wood, and the prefab of the cultist are assets in our asset folder, so linking them is no problem. Let's try this out, and as you can see, the value of the wood instance is being changed. When I exit play mode, the variable remains changed. That's just what scriptable objects do. So for that I usually make a field called initial value that I set in the inspector and a function to reset the value to this initial value. Since scriptable objects don't have awake or start methods, you have to come up with ways around that. I like making another script like level manager that has a list of all the resources in the game. In awake, the level manager goes through the list and sets every resource to the initial value. In the scene, we add the level manager and tell it which float scriptable objects it should reset. Keep in mind that the values are saved between sessions in the editor, but in an actual game, when the player closes and opens the game, the values are reset to the value they were in when you made the build. So don't rely on scriptable objects as an automatic save system. In a future video, I am going to show you how you can save the values and load them using JSON serialization and a helper class. An important part of making the scriptable object decoupled is the use of events. Every time the change amount or set new amount function is called, an event is triggered that informs about the change. Let's make an event called value changed by and one called value set to new amount and assign it an empty delegate so it doesn't throw an error when it's called without having listeners. 
Both events will take a float as a parameter which informs about the new value. And now, when the value is changed, the events are triggered to notify anything that is listening about the change. Next to the actual value, we can also make a field for a sprite, which will be our icon, and a string for the name. Since name is a keyword, I'm using the somewhat awkward variable name, float name. Uh, feel free to come up with something better. A very useful example that I gave in the beginning in how to use the events is a UI display. Let's create an image and a text and name the object resource display. Then we create a script with the same name and attach it to the object. Inside the script, we need a reference to the image, the text, and of course, a float scriptable object that this display will represent. A handy way to set all those things up is doing it in a Unity function called onValidate, which will be triggered when we change things in the editor, but also when the script is loaded. To prevent error messages when you haven't assigned a float scriptable object yet, it's better to exit the function if it is null. Otherwise, the function assigns the icon we specified in the scriptable object to the image and renames the game object to the name of the float scriptable object plus display. And most importantly, we want to set the text to the amount, which will be its own function. It should be called every time the value changed, which is why we created the events in the scriptable object. To be able to connect the event and the function, they both need the same parameters. So set text is going to ask for a float, even though it won't use it, because it can get the value directly. In onEnable, the display subscribes to the event and unsubscribes in onDisable. As I just mentioned, we are ignoring the parameter the event is giving us because this particular display does not care about by how much the resource changed. It only cares about the new value. But you might want to do a little animation, like a green number popping up showing what was gained. So there will be situations when this information comes in pretty handy. Time to try it out. I bring in some sprites that serve as icons and assign them in the scriptable objects I created. Then I take the resource display and turn it into a prefab. Now all I have to do is connect the resource display with a float scriptable object and it should work. The nice thing is that the cultist has no idea about the resource display and the display doesn't give a damn who or what is changing the amount. That is exactly what we want, because I can easily remove one or the other from the game and everything still works fine. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and joining my religious cult. If you have any questions, critique or specific topic you want to learn about, let me know in the comments. Goodbye!